um, which involves relations. So first of all, we may ask, what is a relation and what does it look like? Um, to answer that question, the first one, a relation is um, any relationship between X and Y. Um, it can be defined in many different ways. They may give you just sets of points. Um, they may give you a graph. Um, they may tell you a certain relationship that X and Y have with one another. Okay, and what does it look like? Well, it can look like any of those three things. Um, down here I have the first one, which is the roster method. Um, the roster method of showing what a relation looks like is where they just go ahead and list the point. So, for example, this could be a relation, the point 1, 5. And notice these are all points x, comma, y. 0, 3, and typically these would be in order from left to right on the graph. These aren't. Um, okay, so this is a relation. It tells you how relate x relates to y um, for this first point um, when x is 1, y is 5. The other point when x is 0, y is 3. And the final one when x is negative 7, y is 9. Those are that is their relation to one another. Another way that they can represent a relation is by um, giving you an equation. For example, they may just say y is equal to 2x. Okay, that is the relationship that x and y have. Um, 2 times x is equal to y. We could create a graph of this. It has an infinite number of points because we could plug any real number in for x and get its corresponding y that comes with it. Um, lastly, it could be represented as a graph. They may show you the graph of the relation, which could be an equate, excuse me, could be um, a line. It could be a curve. Okay, so this, whoops, let me get my pencil back. Okay. So this could be an example of a relation. Okay, they didn't tell us exactly what the relationship was. They more showed us. So each individual point on this graph, notice there's an infinite number of them, um, shows us a relationship x to y. Um, it could also be represented on a graph as a set of points. Now notice the difference between my two examples of graphs. One of them is continuous which continuous means um, all of the points are joined together by a line, or it could be what's called discrete, like here. We have a set of one, two, three, four, five points, and that is my entire relation. In this other graph where the line continues forever, we have an infinite number of points there. Okay, that's going to make a difference in what our relation looks like. The one on the right, we could easily represent it using the roster method, where we just write down the points that are there. The graph over here on the left can't be represented that way. Um, it would have to be represented using an equation of some kind. Okay, so that is what relations are, just a relationship between x and y. And it can look like many different things. It could be in the roster method, where you just write down each of the points in your relation. It could be represented as an equation. It can also be represented as a graph. All right, let's practice with these. Let's graph each of these f relations. All right, so our first example is the Roth is written just as the points that are in our relation. We have the point 0, negative 3, the point 1, 5, and the point 4, 7. Um, 0, negative 3, over 0, and down 3. There's our first point, the point 1, 5, the 1 to the right, and up 5. There's 1, 5, and finally 4, 7. 4 to the right, and up 7. This would be our relation completely graphed. 
<clears throat> this one down here looks a little more complex because they didn't list the points for us. But we can go ahead and look at the relationship they gave us here and write down the set of points. It's finite, meaning they just gave us a few numbers that we plug in for n. Okay, so the x coordinate is going to be 2 times n. The y coordinate will be n minus 3. So let's start with our first number they gave us is that n will be 0. Well, if n is 0, for this first coordinate, 2 times 0 is 0. For our y coordinate, 0 minus 3 would be negative 3. There's one point in our relation. Let's go to the next value. Let's do plus or minus in front means both values, 1, and then we'll do negative 1. So let's do 1. Um, if we were to plug 1 in for n, our first coordinate, 2 times 1, would be 2. Our second coordinate, 1 minus 3, would be negative 2. Let's do negative 1. If we put negative 1 into that relation, 2 times negative 1 is a negative 2. And negative 1 minus 3 gives us a negative 4. So far we have three of the points for our relation. Um, now let's go on to our last values here, plus or minus 4. If I plug positive 4 into my relation, 2 times 4 gives me 8 for my first coordinate. And 4 minus 3 gives me 1 for my y coordinate. And our very last one, we're going to plug negative 4 in for n. 2 times negative 4 is a negative 8. And negative 4 minus 3 is a negative 7. I have written down each of the values of n, what they would end up with according to this relation they gave us, that the x value is 2 times n and the y value is n minus 3. So these five points represent our relation. If we were to graph those, we would just graph each individual point. So first we found out what they would be according to the relation they gave us, and now we're going to graph. So there's 0, negative 3, 2, negative 2, um, negative 2, negative 4, 8, 1, And these aren't the most exact graphs, but they give us a basic, <laughs> I don't have a real accurate grid here, but it gives us an idea. Okay. So there is the relation 2n, n minus 3, where n is 0, plus or minus 1, and plus or minus 4. Okay, so that's how we could graph when they give us um, distinct sets of points. Um, let's graph these relations. Notice they are a bit different. Um, this gives me the relation, the x coordinate will be our value, whatever we choose for x. The y coordinate is always going to be negative 3 here. Okay? And it gives us special instructions. x is only to be a number less than 0, so we can't use 0 because it didn't say equal to. We can't use 1 or one half or three, no positive numbers here. Um, but notice it's anything less than zero. So this could be a negative 0.1. It could be negative 0.9999. So this is not going to give us just points. It's going to give us a solid line. Now we're not going to be able to graph every single point because there's an infinite number. But we can pick some values of x. and put in the y so that we know basically what the graph will look like. Um, let's say I picked negative 1 half. That's a number less than 0, so it fits my um, nail. And it said that y is negative 3. Regardless of what x is, y is going to be negative 3. So if I chose negative 2 for my x value, which is OK because it's a value less than 0, y is still going to be negative 3 because that's what the relation told us would happen between x and y. y would always be negative 3, and x is any number less than 0. Um, I could pick here negative 1.2. Still, y will be negative 3, because that's what my relation said. Let's graph what that might look like. Um, I have the point negative 1 half, 
negative 3. So 1 half would be about here, and negative 3. Uh, the point negative 2, negative 3. The point negative 1 point 2, negative 3. So this they're in a straight line, and like we talked about, this is all numbers less than 0. So we're actually going to put an open circle on 0 because it's not included, but everything to the left of it is. Y is always a value of negative 3. So what we get is a horizontal line starting at 0 and going to the left, um, and it's located at Y equals negative 3. Okay, so that would be a graph of this relation. X is any number to the left of 0. Y is always negative 3. <clears throat> Let's try this last one down here. Okay, here's our relation. This time, x is always going to be negative 1, and y will vary. Now, y is going to be any real number between negative 1 and 1. And again, any time they give you an interval like that, you're going to have a solid line rather than just sets of points. So again, we could set up a little t-chart here um, in order to determine kind of where our graph will be. We know it's going to be a solid line, um, but sometimes it's easiest if you have a few points just to make sure you know where you're putting it. So x is always going to be negative 1. We don't get to pick any other x's, okay, because that's what our relation says, is that x is just constantly negative 1. y can vary, but it has to be numbers between negative 1 and 1. So it could be negative 0.5, that's between negative 1 and 1. It could be 0, it could be 1 third, okay, anything between negative 1 and 1. And again, x is going to stay at negative 1 the entire time. Okay, so let's graph these points. We have the point negative 1, negative 1 half, which would be about here. We have the point negative 1, 0 the point negative one, one third. So notice what we're getting is a horizontal line, or excuse me, a vertical line, but it has to start at negative one for y and end at positive one. Those are going to be open circles because the one and the negative one were not included. So just like when you're graphing on a number line and you don't want to include a number, you just put an open circle there. So this is what our graph would look like. It's a vertical line at negative 1 for the, x, um, for the x value, and it goes from y being negative 1 to y being positive 1. Okay, so there's a couple examples of graphing relations. If you're ever given an equation, um, you can always select values for x and plug them in to find your y value. Um, you want to pay careful attention to the restrictions they might give you, like our first one where x had to be a number less than 0, and our second one where y had to be between negative 1 and 1. Okay, let's graph a few.